Hello, hello everybody. Hello and good morning. Hope you're all br up bright and early to join us here at Storybusters. So who is this? This is Charlie. And this, this is Charlie's best friend, Oscar. And who is that? Who are you? Laura. Hi. Morning, Laura. Morning, Charlie. So, ah, Charlie is deaf and she uses BSL. And this is Laura and she'll be voicing over in English. So we'll be working together to make sure that this session is accessible for everyone. I think maybe I'm going to move Oscar because he's very hot. So maybe Oscar might come and join us. He might run around. So we all know he's there. So I'd like to let you know what Story Busters is. We'll be watching a story today, Little Red Riding Hood. So you'll be able to watch the story first. And then we're going to explore that story and do some activity and look at who the characters are and use our imagination and help you create some lovely, exciting ideas. OK. Maybe you're at home and you want to let us know that you're watching or you might want to ask some questions. If you do, you can type them in the chat, in the chat box, and then we'll have a look. Or we might be able to say hello. OK. So I hope you enjoy watching the story. See you in a minute. This is the story of Little Red Riding Hood. It's set in the countryside, surrounded by trees and fields. And there, Little Red Riding Hood lived with her mum. Now her mum was cooking one day when she asked Little Red Riding Hood, can you help me by visiting your grandmother? She's very ill. Little Red Riding Hood was annoyed. Do I have to? The mum asked, please, please, can you help? We need to take some food and things. You know how difficult it is at the moment. Ugh, thought Little Red Riding Hood. Now, she was someone who did not really care. She was obsessed with her phone and everything inside it. She would be texting her friends. She would be focused on checking her Instagram. She didn't want to go out. Fine, she said to her mother. Her mum was happy and gave her a basket full of food and fruit and cakes and sandwiches. It was heaped high and told Little Red Riding Hood to go to Grandma's. Oh, fine, said Little Red Riding Hood. And off she sat walking through the woods, not really caring about the surroundings, but more interested in her phone. And suddenly she bumped into a woodcutter. Hello, how are you? Where are you off to? I'm going to see my grandma's. She's not very well, you know? Oh yes, the grandma, I haven't seen her. She's been in bed for a long time, I haven't seen her for a while. Yes, said Little Red Riding Hood. But inside, she did not really want to talk to him. She wanted to get back to her phone. The woodcutter was a nice man, for kind heart. But he did come across as quite nervous. Oh, okay, I'll leave you on your way. Whatever, thought Little Red Riding Hood. And off she went, carrying on through the forest to pass the trees. And as she carried on going, she was still obsessed with her phone when she... She bumped into a big wolf, hairy, tall, big ears and a long snout with very sharp teeth and came shouting at her. Are you trying to frighten me? 
said Little Red Riding Hood. Um, I am not scared of you. Ha! <laughs> what, so fought the wolf? No, I'm not bothered by you. You should be nice and be kind to people. How? For the wolf. Whatever, said Little Red Riding Hood. I'm busy. Here, I need to try and find the map to my grandma's house. And the wolf said, where was it you said you were going? I'm going to my grandma's house. So I just need to find it on the map. And uh, now I've got a map right here, actually, on my phone. Oh, said the wolf as he looked exactly at the address. Fine, yeah, you go off. Okay, bye, off you go then. So off she went. Little Red Riding Hood carrying on through the forest. But the wolf was feeling very, very thoughtful. He, he's not used to not being able to scare people. And then he realised, Grandma's house. Little Red Riding Hood would not be there for a while. So maybe he could get there before she did. Now, Little Red Riding Hood, she was very slow walking through the forest. She was just checking her phone, checking Instagram, taking photos of birds and butterflies, of flowers on the ground, and making sure she uploaded them all to her stream. She was a busy girl. She was relaxed. She was looking around. She was not bothered. Whereas the wolf, he was much more speedy and got to the house very quickly. He arrived and knocked on the door. Now grandma was very ill, so she croaked at the door. Who's there? It's me, little red riding hood, pretended the wolf. Oh yes, come in, said grandma. You know how to take the door, uh, take the latch off. So the wolf tried and in he went and pounced on grandma, who was petrified and gobbled up in one. The wolf was still hungry, still wanted more food. And then he realised Little Red Riding Hood would be arriving soon. Hmm, what to do? He looked in the wardrobe and found one of Grandma's sleeping hats and one of her night dresses to pretend to be Grandma. He sat in the bed. He got himself comfortable, each of his poor fingers coming over the neck over the sheet. But was Little Red Riding Hood there? No, she was ages. So he sat there ready for her to arrive and was just falling asleep when he heard a bang at the door. Oh, oh how exciting from the wolf. Who's there? He pretended to be Grandma. Little Red Riding Hood, she shouted. Now, Grandma, your voice sounds weird. It sounds really croaky. But you are ill, she thought. Hmm, it's Little Red Riding Hood. I've come to visit you. Oh, come in, Little Red Riding Hood, pretended the wolf. You know the door's on the latch. Yeah, it's been a long time. I've been busy. Anyway, Little Red Riding Hood just ignored Grandma as she unpacked the basket of food. And as she looked at Grandma, she thought, are you, are you all right? You, Grandma, you look quite different. She thought she looked much hairier and with much bigger ears and paw. Grandma was sat there upright in bed. All each of her fingers ready and big ears looking, watching Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, you look different, Grandma, Little Red Riding Hood said. Your, your ears, they're very big. I'm sure before they were much smaller. Mm, really? said the wolf. Well, they're all the better to hear you with. Yes, but Grandma, your eyes, they're really big before they were much smaller. You look different. Well, my eyes, it was difficult to see you before, but it's all the better to see you with, pretended the wolf. But, but Grandma, your hands... Oh, yes, my the hands are all the better to sign with, pretended the wolf. And Grandma, you are so hairy. Well, it's cold. This keeps me warm, pretended the wolf. And 
your nose, Grandma, and those big teeth. Why do I have it? All the better to eat you with, shouted the wolf as he pounced towards Little Red Riding Hood. But no, she said. Stop, Grandma. That's not you. Who is this? And she pulled the hat off to reveal the wolf. And at that moment, the woodcutter came rushing into the room. What's happening? What's happening? Oh, okay. Is everyone okay? Oh, Wolf, you need to move over. Little Red Riding Hood, are you okay? Oh. Little Red Riding Hood looked between them. Calm down, Woodcutter, and Wolf, you stop. You can't bully me. You can't eat me. That's cruel. Where is my grandma? Come on. The wolf said that I ate your grandma, gobbled her right up, and your neck. said Little Red Riding Hood. No, you're a cruel wolf. Why are you always trying to attack people? You want to have friends. How are you going to make them if you just keep eating everybody? Mm, You're not frightened of me, said the wolf. No, said Little Red Riding Hood. Now give me my grandma back. Come on. No, said the wolf. No, said Little Red Riding Hood. And then she had an idea about the flowers she had in the basket. Oh, these lovely flowers I collected on the way here smell so nice. Would you like to have a smell? So the wolf took those flowers and gave a big sniff. And as he did, his nose began to twitch. The little red riding hood was waiting. And as his nose began to twitch, he let out a ginormous sneeze and Grandma just flew out of him. She was covered. You wanted to eat me for... Oh, get off me, you wolf. Get off me. That's it. Get out of the way, Grandma. Oh, look at me. Oh, look at this. This is... How did I get here? You wolf, you should go. You trying to scare me. Little Red Riding Hood was not happy. Wolf, you do not need to scare everyone. You can be nice. You can have friends. Wait, here we go. So then Little Red Riding Hood decided to take a selfie of her with the wolf. Thanks. I'm going to put that on my Instagram story right now. The wolf was absolutely confused. Kind? Oh, I don't know how to. And then as he left the cottage... He was thinking about all of this as he went through the trees. And Little Red Riding Hood went back to her Insta feed. Everyone okay? Fine. Look after yourself, Grandma. And don't accept any strangers to come in. Make sure you check before you let them in. It's really important. Grandma agreed. I was tired and I was expecting you to come and I was very confused. Yes, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. And the woodcutter? I'm just checking everything's okay. And then I'll go back to my work. And off he went. And then Little Red Riding Hood, she looked round, said goodbye to Grandma and went home. I hope you all enjoyed the story. So I know that a few of you have been watching. So I'd really like to say a big hello to Stanley and a big hello to Jolie. So hello and and hello to Mary as well. Thank you for letting me know that you're all here and that you're watching it. Mary said that the story was brilliant. So I'm really glad that you're enjoying yourself. So we really hope to see more of you and make sure you type your name in the comments. So let's start today's session. So that story was Little Red Riding Hood. But who was in that story? There were quite a few characters. But before we even do that, we need to do something else. I need to rein myself back in, get to the beginning. I don't want to jump. We need to warm up. That's what we need to do first. I don't want to go straight into the work. We've got our bodies might be all stiff and uncomfortable. We need to work out how we can move. How can we relax our minds and get flexible? Because it is only the morning, so we might not have woken up yet. So, everybody, I'd like you to stretch your arms. That's it, everybody. And again with your arms. It's the same as an octopus. 
That's it. Make sure your limbs are moving like an octopus. That's it. How I swim through the ocean. Ooh. That's it. Make sure you've got lots of space, though. It's really important to check that you're safe and that you're not going to fall over. But if, as long as you've got a clear area, you can even stand up and stretch. That's it. And get really, really wild. Ooh. Great. So now I'd like you to think about your hands and your facial expression and your body. So we'll start with our face and our facial expression. So we need to really make sure we can warm up our faces. That's it, everyone really squeeze your face together. And a smile. And a really small face. And a wide face. And small. That's it, like you're shocked. <gasps> and into a massive smile, like you're so jumping for joy, jumping for joy, that's it. And now I'd like you to show with your facial expression that you're really angry. What, what can I see? A sweet, oh, I might wanna take that sweet off the floor and oh, 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 that's it. Everybody, that's it, pretend you've got a sweet, oh, this isn't a sweet, this is chewing gum. That's going on for ages and ages and ages. Oh, oh, that's it. Can you copy? That's it. Your whole face might change expression as you're chewing. Really stretch out that chewing. Oh, 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 it tastes. Oh, that's it. Right, keep trying to chew. That's it. And breathing at the same time. Oh, oh, that's it. And we're going to try and blow a massive bubble. That's it. <laughs> And your face might get wider and wider and wider. That's it, that's sweet. Oh, and it's burst. Ugh, how disgusting. Ugh. Now, there's lots of little bits of that sweet, that bubble all over you. Did it happen to you too? That's it, make sure you, you wipe it all off your, off your hair, that's it. Ooh, and off your legs, ooh. Oh, and all of your body, Ugh, that's it, and your arms, that's it. Shake all of that chewing gum off. Oh, wow, definitely feel awake now. Now we need to warm up our hands because some people use sign language and some people might want to warm up their voices. But first we're going to warm up our hands. Okay, you can join in. So we're gonna hold our hands like this. But what could we do? Aha, that's it, hold them together and wide. In. Ooh. that's it can you do it really really fast I can't because I've hurt my wrist oh but maybe I'm gonna ask Laura can you help me can you help me do this really really fast <laughs> really really fast 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 stop and again fast 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 and stop. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Okay, it's hard work, isn't it? Hard work warming up those hands, but it's really, really important that's it, to do those flexible exercises. Also, it keeps all the blood moving around your body. And also for your hands, it's really important for communication. So now we're going to focus on our fingers. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three. Okay, did you see, Laura? Can you carry on? Try and do it fast. You ready? <laughs> can you all do it faster at home? Maybe you can do it much faster. <sighs> Amazing. That's it. Try again. Try again. Ooh. Oh. <sighs> brilliant. So now we feel really nice and warm. That's it. So maybe warm up those shoulders as well. That's it. Brilliant. Ooh. Okay. So now we're ready to begin. Let's go back to that story. So in the story, we had characters. 
So you know the title of the story is Red Riding Hood, so she's in the story. But who else is in the story? So we had Red Riding Hood. Who else? You know who else? Uh, we had the mum, Little Red Riding Hood's mum, that's right. And then we had, ooh, who did we have? Red Riding Hood, who did she go to see? Uh, yes, Grandma, absolutely. And next we had, who did, we have? who did she bump into? The wolf, absolutely, brilliant. And then, so we had the, the woodcutter, that's it. He was cutting down the trees, fantastic. So we had those five characters in the story. So now I'd like you to have a think about those five characters. How did they behave? What was their personality like? The Red Riding Hood, her character, was she really happy, really keen to get enthusiastic? Or was she more lazy and not? She wasn't really interested. Was she like a teenager, didn't really care, she just wanted to focus on her phone? Or was she really keen, she wanted to help? Which do you think? Do you have a think? Then we had Mum's character, the grandma, wolf and the woodcutter and they all had different personalities so have a little think hmm, what was their character like so how did each of those characters react to each other what were their relationships the red riding hood her relationship with her mum was it good with grandma was that good what about the relationship with the wolf were they friends or were they not friends? Do you have a think? So now I'd like you all to decide and pick one of those characters that you are going to become. Okay, one of those characters. And you are going to become that character and act like them. Okay, so Charlie and Laura, we're both going to do the same. Okay, so let's have a think about which character we might pick. Mm, which character? Okay, so Charlie. Yep, yeah, we've both decided. Have you all decided at home? Brilliant. Right. Charlie has decided to be the wolf. Laura, who have you decided? I picked Grandma. Oh, Grandma. Fantastic. So, that means that now we're going to try and change our physicality to become that character. So Charlie becoming the wolf, what does she need to do? She needs to think about her breath. How does the character breathe? So everybody now, think about the character you've picked. How does that character breathe? Do they breathe at steady pace? Or do they breathe quite heavily? Maybe they breathe quite subtly, very small. What, do they have a plain face? That's it. Think about how they're breathing. That's it. Really keep thinking about that. That breath, it's really important when you're building your character. And it's also important to think about how you sit down. How does that character sit down? Do they just leap onto the seat and sit really casually? Or do they sit down very smart and cross their legs very elegantly? Maybe they're old, maybe they're young, maybe they're big, maybe they're very innocent. There's all these differences between all of the characters. So I'd like you all to really think about that with your character. Also, how do they drink water? How do they drink? Are they very delicate? That's it, have a think about that. Now also when building our character, we need to think about perhaps how they itch. How does that character itch? They have a very tiny itch. Are they very subtle? Are they very awkward? Or are they just massive itch in front of everybody? That's it, don't really mind. There's lots and lots of different ways of their character and how you develop your character. You can create that and you are building all those different parts 
to decide how your character behaves. That's it. I'm going to give you two minutes just to explore that. Make sure you're okay in your space. You might want to stand up or sit down. Really think about how your character might eat, all those different things. What would they do if they bumped into something? Or how would they brush their hair? How would they smile? A little smile or a massive smile? Or if you're the wolf, do you have big, sharp teeth as you smile? That's it. All of you now have a think and have a go. And Laura and I will practice drinking water as our characters. And you can all do the same. If you need a drink of water, how would your character do it? Okay, two minutes. Here we go. Laura, are you ready? Are you all still in your characters? Are you all still thinking about it? That's it. Try and really think about how you use your space. Okay. Have you all been walking around? Like your character? Maybe you decided to be the wolf. How did you walk? Did you do big steps? Or did you do lots of little steps? You want to let me know what you were doing? That's it, let me know in the chat which character you were. There might be lots of people that pick the same character. So now we're gonna focus on how those characters react. So the character might react in different ways. So what is their reaction? So it means maybe if somebody is trying to get their attention, is your reaction shocked? Or are you happy? Or maybe you're just confused? How does that character react? So I'd like all of you to think about the character that you picked, the same one as you've been working on so far, that so I'm the wolf and Laura's going to be grandma. And we're going to think about how they react. So I might say hello to Laura as the grandma. Let's see how she reacts. Okay, so the wolf is going to say hello to grandma. Let's have a look. Okay, did you see the difference? So grandma's reaction was very different. She was a bit taken aback. When I was saying hello, but I had my sharp teeth and my big claws, so she was a bit scared. Okay, did you see? I want all of you to think now about how you can react. What do you do? So maybe that our characters are going to a party. Maybe you're going to the party to meet a new friend or an old friend from school. Maybe you see them and you're like, is that a stranger? You're not sure whether you want to go up to them or stay away. Maybe you're going to have a drink. How would you pick up that drink? Have a think about that now. See if you can explore that. The idea of your character is about to go to a party. And the same, we'll do the same to build our character. There we go, have two minutes. That's it. Pretend we're at that party atmosphere. Charlie's the wolf.
Okay, everybody. Did all of your characters go to the party? Did you all stay in that characterization? Fantastic, brilliant. The next, I'd like you all to think about maybe you're going to school, but you're running late. Okay, running late. How does your character react if you're late to school? Maybe grandma's late for work? I don't know. That's it. How do you react? So if you're going to school, are you ready? That's it. How does your character work? Okay. So I'm going to see, I can see here that Dan has said that some very good work going on. So brilliant. Thank you for that. Now, what's next? Maybe your character might find lots and lots of sweets, a whole bag of sweets. So are they going to collect them or not? What's their reaction? Do they like sweets? But they're not my sweets, they're somebody else's sweets. So do I keep them? Or what do I do? How do I react? So I'd like all of you to practice. How would your character react if they suddenly found somebody else's sweets? Are you ready to find the sweets, Laura? Ready. So the wolf thought grandma was going to be ill then because eating all those sweets. See, grandma, she kept trying to steal the sweets, whereas the wolf was a bit more suspicious. Didn't like the smell of those sweets at all. Not bad. That's it. And if a sweet test smells bad, does that mean it tastes good? I don't know. That's it. We can use our characterization to be an animal or a human. We can play with it. So I want you to carry on thinking about those ideas. And you can see, you can carry on developing that character. That's it, so you can really, really push those acting skills. Fantastic. So now we're gonna create some freeze frame. So a freeze frame is what? It's like a fake photograph. So for example, if Charlie is acting and Laura is taking the photograph, Charlie is going to freeze, okay? Okay, so it means that I've frozen in the shape of a photograph. So I'd like all of you, make sure your space is clear, but I'd like all of you to really think about your character and how they're reacting. So how do they react when you see a real wolf? How do they behave? How, what is their facial expression? How does their body change when they're being told off? Okay, so the character is being told off, but you're still that character. So Charlie would be the wolf being told off. Okay, if you're not the wolf, if you're a different character, maybe you're seeing the wolf being told, telling you off. Okay, we're going to make those freeze frames. Are you ready? Ready, Laura? Okay, brilliant. If you don't mind, if you'd like to, you could ask uh, your parent or whoever's looking after you to maybe take a photo and you could send it into Mousetrap so we can see these lovely freeze frames. Maybe next week we'll be able to show some of them. So let's do another freeze frame. So what about when the mother asks Little Red Riding Hood, please will you visit grandma? What would that freeze frame look like? Are you ready? So I'm going to be the wolf and Laura's going to be grandma and each of you carry on with your characters. So Red Riding Hood, how does she behave? Are you ready? 
Ready, Laura? Nice, beautiful, everyone. Very good. And now the woodcutter. When the woodcutter arrives at grandma's house, and there's all the different characters in the cottage. How does the woodcutter react when, uh, when everyone arrives? What does he do? That's it. You have a go, are you ready? That's it, everybody, brilliant. Really, really great exploring of lots of different characters. So now I'd like you to think about how Maybe your character really, really wants to see their friends. Maybe they haven't seen them for a long time. How would that character react? How would they behave? So if I'm the wolf and I haven't seen my friends for a long time, how would I react? What would my freeze frame look like? Okay, and the same Laura's gonna do with grandma that she hasn't seen her friends for ages. How does she react? Okay, are you happy? Are you sad? Are you grumpy? Are you angry? Are you looking for them? Are you thinking? Are you hopeful? That's it, there'll be lots and lots of different reactions. That's it, everyone have a go. Nice, brilliant, lovely everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more. Now your character has been studying for an exam, okay? What do you do? How do you react? Are you really keen to study? Or are you just trying to ignore it? Are you just eating loads of sweets and just trying to ignore the studying? That's it. Use your space to see how you would react as your character. Maybe you're not going to school or a driving test or a cooking test. It could be lots of different exams. Okay. Maybe the woodcutter is really, really keen to learn. And he really wants to learn to sew so he can learn a new skill. It could be anything, okay? You can use your imagination to develop those characters. There won't be two people the same, okay? So here we go, have a go. Great. Lovely. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, so much for all your hard work today. Now it's almost time to finish. Time has just flown. It's gone so fast. And we've already just been working so hard. And you've been just creating such fantastic characters with like your whole body. And they've all linked. So now there's some homework. OK, it's something to keep your imaginations growing and keep building on all those ideas. Okay, so I'll explain what should that homework be. I'd like you all to find a space, a safe space, and I'd like you to create a monologue. Okay, so I'm not a monologue that's really, really, really long, but just a short monologue, just short and sweet. You can write it or you can use sign language and film yourself performing it. And in that monologue, I'd like you to say what that character is feeling. So really think about all those ideas that that character would think. So what is that character feeling? So maybe you want to set up the location where the monologue is being spoken. So it could be in a forest, could be in a cafe, could be with friends and coffee. It could be anywhere. It could be that they're working on a table or in a dining room. It could be anywhere. You create the space, but make sure it's safe. So I really like you to think about that, that location. 
where is the monologue set? You might want to think about costume as well. Maybe if you're a grandma like Laura, then you might be able to find like a hat in your wardrobe or something, or a little bonnet. If you're the wolf, maybe you want a big coat to make you feel really heavy. If you're Red Riding Hood, maybe you need a coat with a hood. You don't have to dress up, not at all. You don't have to, but you can if you want to. It might help you playing in your character and really enjoying becoming that full character. What's really important is that you explain the emotion. What is that character feeling? And you can separate that character from you. So you are becoming the character, not you. So you are empathizing, imagining what they think. Okay, so it's separate. You are the real person, but you're becoming this character, this imaginary character. And what would they think? Okay, so I really want you to think about that. And you can write it down. Maybe they might be thinking about baking a cake, but they don't know how to do it. So they're kind of, they're worried about everyone thinking it's going to be terrible. But they don't want to say they can't. Maybe they're not feeling very well or they're bored or they want to do something. How do they express all of those feelings? They want all of you to think of all those different ideas. So for example, you can make up your own idea. When you've finished, you can either send it to us or you can send a video to us if your parents say that's okay. Okay. I really hope that you've enjoyed this session this morning. I really hope to see you again next week where we will have some more people as well. So I hope you have a really good day and take care. So we'll give you the information in a minute so you can find out how to send in your work. Okay. Thank you. Bye.